We're now in the delivery room, or as we call the operating room, the room for a cesarean. And we're going to go into more detail about the procedure, indications, and context for a cesarean. And I've invited my friend Guy Waddell, head gynecologist, obstetrician, at our regional university hospital. He's here to talk to you about the medical specifics of a cesarean, as we're in the operating room. Thanks for joining us, Guy. My pleasure, Marie. Hello. And for our audience today, can you talk about cesareans and the various reasons that indicate that we must do a cesarean on various mothers? First of all, 20 to 30 percent of births require a cesarean. Of course, depending on the center where we practice and the population we're serving. There are many reasons, and the most common ones are associated with the baby and the labor, of course. There are also indications for mothers and the placenta. For the baby, one of the main reasons that we have to do a cesarean is that the baby can't tolerate contractions. It's important to remember that a contraction is stressful for a baby. A baby that is already tired at the start of labor might handle contractions poorly. We have to do a cesarean on the mother to eliminate the stress. Other reasons concerning the baby are poor birthing positions, and the most common issue is the breech position. Though we can sometimes perform a vaginal delivery depending on the position of the baby's head, if it's a flexion rather than an extension, depending on the position of the feet, or whether they are higher or lower than the buttocks. And finally, also based on the baby's weight, we might have to do a cesarean. There are other poor birthing positions, such as the traverse position, when the baby is on its side or presenting with its head and a hand, that arrives with the head. This, of course, would also require a cesarean.